Hey, hey, hey! It's very nice to be with you once again, my friend. And thank you for giving me your precious time, and I know how valuable it is to you. So in this lesson, we will instruct and discuss entry-level basics of JavaScript animation programming on the HTML5 Canvas element. This is Canvas Animation Programming 101, first day, so we will go very easy on you and explain the basics in depth. You will get a quick coding exercise that will enable you to create a basic animation on your Canvas tag using JavaScript. And we'll also have a nice little discussion so I can pass along some ideas and discuss universal animation theory with you. I'm also an ActionScript 3.0 instructor for Flash authoring. So many of the key concepts of ActionScript 3.0 animation programming that I already have in a huge playlist here can be looked over and transition to JavaScript rendering on the HTML5 canvas element as long as you understand programming to a good enough degree. There are three basic steps in JavaScript canvas tag animation programming. The first step is to draw your assets to the canvas using JavaScript. The next step is to quickly clear the canvas. And the third step is to very quickly redraw the assets in their new state or their new location in order to make the effect of animation. These are universal animation concepts. You have linear animations, tween animations, and also something called multiplane animations, which you don't hear a lot about multiplane animation, but it's something you see a lot in movies, cartoons, and it was developed by Disney. Walt Disney himself actually spearheaded the development of the multiplane camera and things like that. You can go here on YouTube to this URL to watch this video about the multiplane camera that was developed by Disney way back when. Or you can just go to the search bar at YouTube and type in the multiplane camera and you'll get this video and it's a really cool concept and I've applied this concept to a lot of my earlier Flash ActionScript 3.0 tutorials. So we can also apply this multiplane camera concept to our JavaScript and HTML5 canvas animations when we get good enough. We're not going to be showing you that in this first tutorial. This first tutorial we're going to create a linear animation and maybe down the road we'll get into the more advanced concepts of animation programming. But in this tutorial and right now in the code exercise that we're about to go through right now you're going to learn how to create a linear animation. Okay now we're going to do a hands-on coding exercise that will teach you how to animate from scratch on the canvas tag using JavaScript. Okay, so you can see we're starting with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. And I have my style element ready to go, my scripting element for JavaScript. And you can see in my body tag, I already have my canvas element all set up. It has an ID of canvas. Its width is 550 and its height is 400 pixels. Now if I render this to the page right now, using my favorite browser to view it in, I get nothing. I would just get a blank page because there's nothing there. So what I'm going to do is just put a border around my canvas. That way I can actually see where my canvas exists on the page. So in CSS you can just target canvas and actually this will target all canvas elements on the page. But since I have only one I can use this method or you can target the actual ID of canvas. Border, color, we'll make it something like that. The devil code. One pixel and solid. So it's one pixel wide solid border that is the devil color. Now if we render this to our favorite browser we'll see an actual border around our canvas that way we can see exactly where our canvas is on the page. Alright now let's code a button into the page and target its on click event. So when somebody clicks the button we want to fire off a function called draw. Open close parentheses and you can put in a semicolon there to break that line if you want but it's not even really necessary and then we'll just make sure we close that button tag and for the content section we'll just type in the word draw so that's what the button will say and we're going to feed two parameters or two arguments into this draw function it's going to be the x and y coordinates of where we want our box to appear zero x position and a zero y position now that's all of the html and css that we're going to need now in the javascript section here we're going to need a function called draw and it's going to have to take in those two parameters so let's go ahead and write that in function draw open curly brace 
go down a couple of blinds, put in your closing curly brace. Now instead of these saying 0, 0, we want them to actually say X and Y because those are going to be variable names that are going to represent those numbers. So we can just, you can have that say poop and P if you like, but just know that they represent the X and Y coordinates. If I were you, I'd call it X and Y. So right when the draw function fires off, and as many times as it repeatedly fires off, it's going to have two parameters that are being passed through it, two arguments. Okay, the first line within that function is we want to target the canvas element on the page. So we say document.getElementById canvas, because that's the identifier for our canvas tag. And I put a little code comment here that says reference the canvas element on page. The next line, we're going to establish a 2D context for the canvas element. And that's going to be a variable called ctx. And ctx is equal to canvas.getContext2D. Now this next line here is to save the canvas state if required. And actually the little animation that we're programming in this tutorial, it's not really required, but it doesn't hurt the script. So we're going to leave it in place. But this would be used for animations where you have a lot of transitional things happening. And the state of the canvas needs to be saved. Now this next line is a definite requirement and what that does is it clears the canvas for redrawing the scene. And that takes on four parameters or four arguments. And just make sure you put the width and the height of your canvas element as the last two parameters for the clear rect. And the first two get set to zero. Now with these next two lines we're going to style and actually draw a rectangle. It's going to be a green rectangle. And this says makes a green box. That should actually be style a green box. Style for a green box. And then like I said the next line draws the rectangle. So when you use fill style this is using the RGBA function which lets you pass in four parameters and those are basically for specifying red, green, and blue and alpha. So this is your red, this is your green, this is your blue, and this is your alpha setting for the color. So you can make it somewhat transparent if you want. And then CTX fill rect is actually what draws it. And you see the first parameter here is the X position for where you want that little rectangle to show up on the canvas. So we're just making that dynamic. That way each time these function is drawn and redrawn, it will have a new X position and that will give the effect of animation to the viewer. The next parameter is the Y position. And then the next two parameters are the size of the rectangle, 50 by 50, 50 pixels by 50. Okay, now this next line is used to restore the canvas state if you're using save. So if you have the kind of animation that requires to save the canvas state, then at this point in your script, you want to restore the canvas state after the elements have been drawn, after your assets are drawn. Now with the next line, we're going to increment the X position. And you can increment that by 5 or 10 or whatever. I'll just leave it on 5 for now. And this is what is really the magic behind the movement of the little box. We're going to transpose its X position over a timed loop. Now since we've been recently using this in some of our uh, JavaScript tutorials, it shouldn't come as any surprise to you, any of you guys. We're setting up that loop timer variable again. And the loop timer variable is set up to hold the set timeout method. So basically it's just your timer and it gets two parameters. The first one is the function that you want to execute every 20 milliseconds and the second parameter is your 20 milliseconds. If you want that to be one second, you put it at 1000 milliseconds. If you want it to be five seconds, 5000 milliseconds. So I'll just set mine to 200 milliseconds. That way we can see kind of like a choppy animation and you can really sense what's going on. And that's all the script you're gonna need for this very basic animation example that will really get you off and running into more complex animation programming. Okay, so now let's render this to our favorite browser. So I'll go to File, Preview and Browser, and I'll just use Chrome. So now what's supposed to happen is when I hit Draw, a green box should appear somewhere around up here, and it should start animating across the page right away. There we go. So you can see it's a very choppy animation. I'm going to show you how to smooth that out and make it look like butters. Okay, so here you have the second parameter for your set timeout method. Remember I said this is really controls the timing of your animation. It's almost like your frame rate, sort of. 
Now let me set that at 20. Draw. Look how fast that's going, right? Now let's set this to 1. That's how many pixels we're going to offset the exposition of that box each frame. See? That's a lot smoother and it's not so jagged. It's not such a uh, choppy animation. So you play with those two numbers and you can get just the animation you want. Let's go two pixels. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You could probably set this safely on something like 30. Put that on 3 and you'll still have a pretty smooth animation, I bet. That's not bad. You can play with those numbers to really fine-tune and tweak the, uh, the smooth factor, the smoothness of your animation. And it's also something to keep in mind is that the user's computer, if somebody has an old crappy computer, they probably have an old crappy video processing capability in the system. Their animation uh, rendering capability is just not going to be up to speed with like somebody who's got a computer like mine or like yours. You know what I mean? Okay, so you've got your coding exercise. You see how the animation programming works. And it's pretty basic stuff. There's nothing really hard about it. And like I said, you can transition a lot of the Flash Action Script lessons that we put out a couple of years ago. You can transition all of that code over to JavaScript now, now that the Canvas tag has become popular. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this HTML5 and JavaScript lesson on how to animate on the Canvas element using JavaScript. We'll have some more discussions and coding exercises to follow that are along these same lines.